What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing you a clip from episode 360 of the Black Gold Hockey Podcast, where Sam Smith, Mark Allred, and Dom Tiano discuss the, their predictions for Bruins defenseman Mason Lowry. So, his he's obviously going to make the opening night roster. I mean, he just had he unless he has like a complete <coughs> screw up or if he in, gets injured or whatnot. But he's pretty much a lock for opening night. Um, but adding a Zadorov kind of makes his spot as the top left defenseman kind of in jeopardy here. Does it not? I don't know that I, it's in jeopardy. I mean, I've been a firm believer that you can't have him for 82 games on the top pairing. You need somebody to go in and relieve him at times. <clears throat> so I think you break him in slowly. Um, you know, he's got a, he's got good coaches behind the bench that are going to help him out because he's going to have times when things are not perfect. Still, he's never played 82 games. Yep. I agree. I totally agree. Um, I, I like the option of putting low ride down on the third pairing with beak. I think Andrew's a, a decent veteran in the league, and I think he, you know he could continue to learn off of him, and and you know have have uh, uh, Wotherspoon be that seventh guy, you know the rotating guy. So I I like the idea of Zadorov and and um, and uh, McAvoy, McAvoy up on the top, you know, and if changes need to be made on the power play, if 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 Charlie's not producing. You know, there's an option right there. A good mobile big defenseman that can move around laterally really well and, you know, survey the ice pretty good. I've seen it several times. You could you could definitely see low rise IQ peak at times. And and you know that that's going to be a future asset. But right now, you know, he is green, but there's there's so much upside and potential. There is an insane amount of potential and upside for this kid. He's going to he is going to be something special, and he already is. If you think about it, I mean, his de- his offensive ability as a defenseman is is bonkers. His stick handling, his speed, um, his shot's pretty good too for a defenseman. He's a pretty good shot as a rookie. Um, I especially saw it in Game One against Florida this year. That shot he had in the sec- that goal he had in the second period of that game, man, that looked like a sniper to me. That didn't look like a defenseman. That looked like a forward. Taking a well, shot. he played forward for a long time. So, well, yeah, mm-hmm. that's probably like I just, good. I just can't believe how many people were willing to include him in a trade for Noah Hannafin. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> and my art, my argument from day one was: within three years, he's going to be a better all-around defenseman than Noah Hannafin. Yeah, it's like we're seeing. I- it. One thing I saw last year um, at the American Hockey League level and the NHL, which you really love to see, is w- when he made a mistake, he powers himself back into the play to, to get try to get that puck back. And he skates really, really well uh, when he makes a mistake. And, um, and those, are, those are really good fundamentals that you want to have in a, in a developing player that's, that's still young enough, still can be nurtured into playing a certain role, uh, work with Adam McQuaid on on agility and not not fit you know physicality. I'm not saying fighting and so on, but you know how to hold yourself up, a frame yourself, and be a be a presence on the ice. You know that's what Adam freaking thrived on. Yeah. Um, so he's still going to learn, and I and I think that this is a really good defenseman. And yes, I'm very happy, Dom, that he's not involved in 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 any trades because um, yes, you do have to give to get. But when you're thinking about your future on, on the blue line and so on, and and you continue to sprinkle prospects around the league, you're actually taking steps back. Mm-hmm. Regardless of how you want to think of it, it's like, you know, you, you, you're taking steps back in a certain direction. No, yeah, you are. You're 100% on the money with that. I mean, if, you, if you're looking to – like I saw a report last year that if the Bruins were to trade for Noah Hannah, then it would have, it would have required <laughs> – more than what uh, Calgary got from Vegas for him. Lorai, Merkulov, a first. Like, no. Like, why? 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 It makes no sense. 
I said it then. It doesn't make any sense. It still doesn't make any sense. So I'm glad they they stuck with their gut, kept Lorai around. He became one of my favorites last year. He did. I like like I said on the first pod that I was on. Every time he steps on the ice, I see improvement every single time. I saw him when I went to a game in Providence last year. And he looked good there. I saw him every time he stepped on the ice in Boston. It was constant improvement with this kid. Every time. He didn't make the same mistakes he did the night before. And the, st- the mistakes that are he still makes, he's going to work on this summer and work on in training camp, and he'll iron those out. He is going to be, like you said, Dom, a better defenseman than what Noah Hannafin could be in three years. He's he lined up for it. It may not even take that long. No, it might it might not. So I like the idea that he's training in Boston. Oh yeah, he's still yeah. in Boston, yeah. And with he's other pros, right I think I think that's the way to I think every young player should just really grasp onto that. Just be around these guys, see their work ethic, feed off of that, constantly learning what it takes to cross that threshold. I'm I don't know. There's I don't know. I'm going to leave this one alone. Yeah. Well, should be very interesting to see what Lorai does. I mean, it, he'll probably be involved in the power play in some way next year. Not the first unit, maybe the second unit. He might quarterback the second unit to start. Um, that, that would probably be what I'd suggest, right? Well, here's here's the thing. Um, Montgomery likes two defensemen on the second unit. So if you got Lori out there, who's on the right side? So uh, that's where Shattenkirk was last year, but he's not here anymore. I'm trying to think. So you got Carlo or Peak? I would put Carlo there. On the power play? No. You got you got. Uh, would you put Peak there then? What no, would you do? I wouldn't put any either one of them there. Would you put two it's, left? Would you put Lindholm or Zadorov there? I like the, the Zadorov because of the shot. I would yeah. actually, if it were me, I would try Zadorov on the first unit and Lorai and McAvoy on the second unit. I was just thinking that because that could work because Lorai and McAvoy they have chemistry. Yeah. Zadorov can power can quarterback Pasternak and Marshawn and whoever else is on this, the top unit. Elias Lindholm will be there. And then the second unit can be Lori McAvoy with like Coil and Geeky and a Zaka if he ends up there or a Beach, not Beecher. Maybe a watch Braswell. Potra, watch Patra on the half wall. Okay, so Patra, then maybe not Geeky. Maybe put Geeky on the first. No. Because Geeky should be on the power play. I think Geeky's good. Well, okay. If Geeky's, Geeky's got to be your net front. Well, wait a minute. If you do this, power play two could be. Mm, that's two centers and a winger, though. If you do Coil Patra and then Brazo as your net front presence in front with Laura. You, you can have two centers out there. Yeah, you could put Patra as your winger. As like your I, I could tell you, Patra is magic on the half wall. He oh, really is. No, he is. In puck battles and scrums in the corner, Patra, man, he just digs pucks free. He yeah. magically, he's magical in that situation. I I don't see that out of a lot of players, especially at his age and how young he is. I don't see that. And I'll t- for all for as hard a time as the Bruins had getting the puck to to David Pasternak for his one timer. Mm-hmm. Okay, I watch Braden Bowman. And Matt Patra in the OHL, Bowman would be Pasternak, Patra on the half wall, and he could get through, get that puck through sticks, bodies, legs. He always found a way to get it over to Bowman and that one timer, just like Pasternak. Every time. So, are you willing to experiment putting Patra on the top unit? This is all stuff they got to work on in the preseason. This is not stuff I want them messing around with during the season. Well, no, but but yeah, you got to you got to put players. 
where they're the strongest. Give them the best chance to succeed. <clears throat> the only problem is if you put Patra in that spot, then what do you do with Brad Marchand? Mm. Mm. Well, That's mm. so you can do if the Bruins are really convinced on doing the one defenseman four power four forward unit on the first unit, you can do Elias Lindholm, Brad Marchand, Matt Potra as your forwards, Posternak and your defenseman, whether that's McAvoy, Zadorov, I don't know, on your as your defenseman there. You could do that. Posternak is better with a left shot defenseman. Okay, then then Zadorov. It's not or, bad. No, it's, it's not bad if you think about it because you put Posternak and Marshawn, they have a connection. Lindholm will be your bumper spot in the center, in the slot. You have Potra who works the wall. Zadorov can quarterback a power play. Posternak at that one-timer. It's balanced. And there's five legit weapons on your power play. Because Marshawn can still score here and there in the power play. You have Elias Lindholm, who was known for being the bumper spot in the power play. Pasternak has that one-timer. Zadorov can can shoot the puck for rebounds in front. And Potra's just a sneaky little threat down there. Too, too many right shots. Well, you have three and two. So if you... And you have five guys, it would be three lefties, two righties, or three righties, two lefties. So it's like... Like you want the right shot in the bumper. I think they like a left shot on the half wall. And that's not Patra. Hmm. Well, yeah, well, you could put Marsh on there and just put Patra like behind the net type thing. Gretzky's office? I don't know. They'll um, they'll figure it out. They'll, they'll figure there's, it out. There's <laughs> options. Why aren't you exploring Hampus Lindholm as left defenseman on power play one? Because I don't think he's fit for that, to be honest. He may be a power play two, but not a power play one. I don't think. They tried it last year. It didn't work. They tried work. it last year, and it didn't work. With Pasternak, Marshawn, Coyle, Debra, it didn't work. That's why. I mean... Preseason, you might have to shuffle it around and have to figure it out, but regular season, I would trust McAvoy or Zadorov over Lindholm on the first unit. Second unit, go ahead and put Lindholm there. That's fine. First unit, no. Like what you saw? Be sure to come back next week for episode 361 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast for real Sam Smith, Mark Allred, and Don Tiano discuss the latest on Bruins Gold and Jerry Swift. See you then.